But what made you decide to do a color animator? Um, yeah, so the deal is, Casey, it's complex. Uh, as you know, um, I, I forget exactly what we said, but during the interview I did with you, I talked about something that I had not done a good job on ever in my career, like a specific technical thing, and that I sat down to do, right? This is another one of those. Um, I've never done good particle systems, really. They were all like programmer art and didn't have much in the way of features and all this stuff, right? And so, like, even Braid, which the look was determined mostly by particles, um, the particles were technically very simple, right? It's just fade in, sustain, fade out, and maybe a little bit more, right? Like rotation, whatever, but very basic. And, you know, so for Sokoban game, somebody else is going to be doing a lot of the particle system stuff. Actually, somebody else already has. Uh, but I was thinking about it, and I'm like, okay, one of the things that makes particles look good is to have control over color. Maybe this is what I mentioned in the interview, but, like, you know, particle systems that we do typically had even the braid one and, and even the witness one is like designate an rgb color for the beginning and the end of the particles lifetime and actually two colors that you randomly pick between and interpolate and um you just get really muddy boring colors like that and so i wanted to have a way where you can get better colors right so um I was like, look, if I just put in a little bit of effort to do just an editor where you can do an arbitrary sequence of colors, then A, I can use that, and then B, we can just give it out with the other getRect widgets, and then anyone who wants to make a gradient or whatever can. And so, I don't know if you saw this, but we have, you know, you can output the resampled array or the source keyframes. Um, you know, if I want 100... Actually, I've got to hit enter on that. If I want 100 things, then boom, and now we've got the data, right? And so um, that's pretty useful. And since we will also be able to use it to make our particles nicer, like this already right here, this simple three frame thing with Aramid interpolation in OK Lab is like, way nicer than any particle system that we ever shipped. Like our particles simply cannot do this. So um, yeah, that's the, that's the backstory for anyone who is wondering. Um, so, and, and basically I felt like, you know, I had for this part of it, because particle systems were always something I wanted to do better at, you know, I just, this sprung to mind is like, okay, if we do this, It'll be a major component in making particles better, um, especially if you want your game to be colorful. And, you know, if I assign it to somebody, it'll probably, you know, it always takes longer and they never know what you mean and whatever. I bet I could just do this in a weekend project. And so here we go. Uh, you know, it was just today, Four sessions today, um, if you count the amount of time I was actually programming this, as opposed to like chatting and answering questions and making tea, it's maybe six and a half hours. And it's like, dude, should I have spared fucking six and a half hours in the braid time frame to make better particles? Maybe, <laughs> you know? Should I have done it in the witness time frame? Maybe. It's just so hard when when you're just getting bombarded by all this stuff to do, it's just very hard to sit down and make, and I never would have thought that this would go this fast. I think, um, it's still not, you know, it's still not totally simple. Cause it's like, well, we're outputting an array of stuff that's variable size. And that's a little bit more annoying to put that on your entity, but it's fine. You know, whatever. 
this also mean can of wormholes is done. Um, I am pausing on can of wormholes for a while. Uh, I did not get the good ending. I'm not sure I'm going to get the good ending. We'll see. Next step is to make it a 2D gradient. No, because 2D gradients are not useful in our particle systems. Actually, they are, though. Because... You know, like... You don't necessarily want every particle to do exactly the same path, right? So you want some variance per particle in some way. And the question is, once we put this in, what is that? But maybe lifetime variance is enough. Maybe you can start and end earlier or later, and that's how you get variance. Maybe you could have a small hue shift modifier. I don't think you would want it to be too big. You could have hue shift beginning and hue shift end and randomly roll that and then go through that. Um, anyway, this has been a great success. Like, dude, even if I don't work on this tomorrow, like, this is at the point where I could hand it off to the team and say, do this, please. Like, just use this widget and go. I mean, we want to at least make the widget the right size and get rid of the dummy thick border and stuff, but, like, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and put the controls in the time view. But even if we don't do this, it's fine. They could start using it. One day, dude. One day and I took tons of break. Imagine if I had just cranked all day. Like I said, this was like six and a half hours, right? What if I had done a 15 hour day today? I'm such a slacker. Such a slacker. Show the time view. Time view doesn't do anything yet. If you just use a texture lookup, then it's not really a thing anymore. Anyway, you can just output the gradient to a texture. Yeah, I'm just I just mean in terms of saving and loading entities on disk. You know, like one like if you just have a fixed slots like color zero and color one, it's just a little, you know, there's no dynamic allocation or anything, right? But we already do dynamic allocations for some things. It's fine, really, honestly. Um, yeah, but that's what we would do is we would load, you know, so this was the resampled array, but we would essentially load the binary version of this, the source keyframes. Uh oh, so one thing I learned is like, uh, predictably Emacs does not like it when you, uh, how much did we do a million keyframes on one line? Yeah, it wasn't good. Um, so, yeah, here's the source data. You would just load this in. You would pass it to the function that generates this, and we would write that into a texture, totally. Um, or maybe not even a texture, maybe just a float array. I don't know. I don't know how you do it on a modern GPU. Um, either way. Is it faster? from a pixel shader to ref to to sample a float array or sample a 1D texture that's got float coefficients i assume it's about the same right i mean we don't actually need fancy interpolation on the texture cuz the texture is already going to be relatively dense 